There are two passages in the Bible that intrigue me very much. The first is in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. And the second is in Revelation, the very last book of the Bible. In the first instance, we find God searching for man. And in the second instance, we find God extending an invitation to me. In the creation story, God placed man at a particular place, at a glorified place. Then he came looking for man to communicate with him, but Adam was not where he was supposed to be. So we find God calling out to him. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. God had placed man in the most beautiful of settings. With the responsibility to subdue the earth and be fruitful. God had a plan for man that would prosper man and provide him with an expected end. But man would not let that plan run its course. Man desired to circumvent the plan of God and execute his own. And so man disobeyed God. When given a choice, man chose to believe a lie instead of the truth. Adam and Eve thought they were going to be wise. In their wisdom, they sewed for themselves aprons of leaves. They ended up being naked. In spite of what they had done, God still came looking for them. God is still looking for man today, and he calls us by our name. God does not delight in the death of the sinner. So he leaves the 99 sheep behind and goes searching for the lost lamb. That is who God is. He is Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is our shepherd. When Adam finally responded to the call of God, he talked about everything else except for the cause of the problem. He talked of his nakedness and his fear being reasons for hiding from God. God kept on pressing and asking and probing. Then Adam shifted his story and began giving excuses, blaming everyone but himself. Change can only come when we allow the light of God's word to shine on our hearts and our deeds. This is what God told the Apostle Paul. I am sending you to open their eyes, so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Acts chapter 26 verses 17 to 18. When we allow the light of God's word to shine in our lives, it pushes away all the darkness and illuminates our path. Adam came to a realization that when God's light shone on him, the apron of leaves was no cover at all, he was naked. In Revelation chapter 3, the church in Laodicea thought it was rich, and so did not need anything. But when God's light shone on them, they were wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. What reasons do you have for not having a relationship with God? The apron of leaves was not enough for Adam. Every man needs to answer the question, where are you? For himself. Where are you in your relationship with God? Where are you in your relationship with your fellow man, family, friends, and community? Are you also naked and ashamed? What are you using to cover yours? Education? Wealth? Status? Philosophy? Drugs? What are you holding on to that makes you feel you do not need God? Another lesson we learned from the fall in the garden is where we place God in our life. Eve placed the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. That God had rather placed the tree of life in the middle of the garden, Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. If man has any other center than God, it always goes wrong. What is in the center of your life? In the explosion of knowledge, science, and wealth, man cannot answer for himself the four basic questions of life. The origin of life, where did we come from? The ethics of life, how should we live? The meaning of life, what is the purpose of life? And the destiny of life where is mankind heading? Psalm chapter 75 verses 6, 7 says. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge, he putteth down one, and setteth up another. The answers you seek do not come from the east, nor the west, nor the south. Why does God point us in these directions? God says what you are looking for cannot be found in the east. In the east, you find Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Shinto, Confucianism, Jainism, and so forth. Where you were ushered into transcendental meditation, yoga, enlightenment. God says the peace of mind you seek, the hope you seek, the comfort you seek cannot be found in the East. In the West you find materialism, the primary focus of the West is the accumulation of material wealth. God says you can't find the meaning and the purpose of life in materialism. In the South, you find the practice of the mystics, the voodoo, animalism. God says you can't find salvation there. 
Where are you looking to find the peace of mind you so earnestly crave? We have tried everything. We have consulted all the knowledgeable people we can find. We have spent billions of dollars on anything that promised some hope. And yet we are saddled with a society that has practically lost hope in itself. God says in Isaiah chapter 47 verse 13 that you are tired. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you, those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. The many advice you have received from your experts has worn you out. They cannot save you from what is coming upon you. They cannot give you the peace you want. They cannot fill the void in your heart. You have turned everywhere but one place. The psalmist says. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Psalm chapter 121 verses 1 to 2. Like the psalmist, we must come to the realization that what we need cannot come from earthly powers. It can only come from the Lord. Our help can only come from the Lord. Why is that a logical conclusion, because he made heaven and earth? If I need to trust someone to help solve life's problems, I would be better off seeking out the one who created life and sustains all things. God is not a local or national God, like the idols of the nations, but the God of heaven and earth. He, who created and sustains everything, also has plans for you. Plans that would prosper you and give you the peace you so desperately need. He knows all the difficulties you will encounter during your time on earth. These difficulties and challenges are under his control. But the sad truth is that we continue to deny God, but rather idolize man. We have made knowledge, science, and wealth the center of our lives. We look to man to get us out of the mess we find ourselves in. Even in these times God has not abandoned man. His eternal gospel is still being preached. Fear God, and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and sea and springs of waters, Revelation 14-6-7. In a society that denies their need for God, God still reaches out to man. He points out to man that the root cause of all their problems lies in the fact that, we have abandoned him and are looking for solutions in the wrong places. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Our thirst will never be quenched this way. God has provided us with a spring of living water. It is free to all who are thirsty and need a drink. And this living water is his son, Jesus Christ. It is only this water that can give us life. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so in the final chapter of the Bible, we find Jesus extending an invitation to everyone to come and receive forgiveness in the gift of eternal life. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price, Revelation chapter 22 verse 17. This is God looking for man to offer to him freely eternal life, if only man would take it. Today, if you so desire, you can have eternal life. If this message has blessed you, you can support our work by subscribing and sharing it with friends and family. God bless you. Amen.